Thanks for joining Dating with Katie. Today I'm pretending I'm Cheryl Crow. This is my Cheryl Crow look. I get, I get that quite often. Uh, the only thing that bothers me about that, because she is kind of a rock star, literally, um, is that she's 10 years older than me. But if you're watching, you can kind of see my Cheryl Crow hair. We went a little darker. But today we're going to be talking about the five dumb things you do to kill your first date. I mean, guys, I hear feedback constantly from my matchmaking clients of you know, silly little things that people are doing that are not getting them a second date. And that is the goal. Look, even as a matchmaker, I can get women to go out with you that you can never get. I can make your first date happen. And that's what I do, right? I'm the recruiter. I find quality women. I match them with my quality men, but maybe you're messing up that first date. So I am here to share with you men and women and what they're saying that you guys are each doing. So this will be a hit to both of you and hopefully a help to both of you as well. All right, well, let's make sure that you subscribe. Push that subscribe button. We gotta get me to a thousand followers. That is my goal for the end of the year. Um, and I wanna just know that you are, you know, I feel like when you hit subscribe, that it's gonna be good dating karma, right? You are like, I'm serious. Uh, I'm one of her 20 percenters. I want her to know that. So yay for you. So subscribe to this so you can get my weekly podcast. Also do me a favor, get in my network, get in my database. It's totally secure. Uh, just a few of us matchmakers use it and that's with sync.com. The link is right below. And then if you do want to work with me, you're going to have to get in that link anyway. And again, I do coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I, I run your Bumble profiles just to make sure you're doing it right. I schmooze with the ladies or the men. And then I also do hand-picked matchmaking, which is much more curated. Love to share more with you about that. Get in my network. All right, well, let's get started with today. Now you have to understand that, you know, there's a lot of dating coaches out there. Everyone's giving advice nowadays. I swear where everyone is like an expert. You get these 20 year olds and they're experts. I'm like, really? Really? You're 20. Like, what do you know about relationships, dating, divorces, marriages, round twos? They don't. And you know, they try and maybe they're just eating off other people's, uh, you know, podcasts or whatnot. But I have to tell you after being 10 years in the matchmaking business, uh, doing great matches, calling thousands of women, interviewing them, um, putting them on dates, having these great clients, I see both sides are still messing up on first dates because we get feedback from both. So our females that go on dates with our clients will give us a feedback. We actually have a form that we do. Uh, are there deal breakers? Were there any red flags? And how do they behave? And then also our clients will get that about uh, the non-paying clients. So we want to be able to help both sides which is what I'm here to do. I'm here to get you confident, be successful, and have some fun dating again. So speaking of that, I hope you guys are following me on Instagram. I just took a poll to see how much fun people are having dating. So I asked the question, uh, it, was, it was the poll. So it was, are you exhausted or are you having fun dating? And 81% of you said, I am exhausted, Katie, uh, which is understandable. I know recently I just bought a house and it's exhausting buying a house. You're swiping, you're looking, you're, you like the outside, but you don't like the inside. You're going to have to renovate. Um, the one you love is a little bit out of your league, right? So it's so much like that. And now I'm married. I haven't been quite dating. Uh, I mean, we're still dating each other, right? But I haven't been in that dating world for a couple of years now, but I get it. It's exhausting. So, but g good enough though, that if 81% of you said you were exhausted, the other 19% said they were having fun dating. So I like hearing that. And I know both of you are still my 20 percenters. Uh, those who follow me, I call them my 20 percenters because I believe 80% of people dating are just not quality. They haven't really done the work. Um, they don't have enough time. They have limitations, which is going to be my next podcast on limitations. Like there are things and reasons why you probably shouldn't be dating and you're leading people on hat fishing, cat fishing. I mean, we, we've seen it all. You all understand what I'm talking about. But the 20 percenters are what I call cool, quality, and ready. So you guys are just cool people. You've done some cool stuff in life. You traveled well. You're curious. I, I just spoke with a new client. He's like, Katie, I want a woman who's curious. Like she doesn't have to be super intelligent in the sense where she's got Harvard degrees. But if she's not curious, like there's definitely women who have Harvard degrees, but would be too afraid to go to Bhutan. And that he's like, I need a girl who will go to Bhutan, who has this curiosity in her, who's just a yes girl. And I always am late, like, ladies, be the yes girl. Like you're, you're knocking yourself out even to get a first date because you're like, nope. And so we will be talking about that in a minute. Now, I also asked my 20 percenters, those who follow me, of, of you guys, how many of you are laser focused? Like you're very, very serious, which is the other third thing. You know, my clients are cool. 
they're quality, you guys have a good value set, and they're ready. So of the of my followers, 54% said they were laser focused at finding a partner, which is impressive. I am like, you guys are my 20 percenters. You guys are rock stars. You know how hard it is. But here's here's why you need to be laser focused, because 33% of you said, you know, you're medium focused, but you know what happens when you're medium focused? You find medium focused people as well. So it's really never going to be a fit fit to find a relationship. And then the rest of you just said, do I have to focus now, Katie? Which I appreciate because you understand this is not your season to be dating. There are seasons in life. And so thank you for not putting yourself on the market and, you know, g- giving everybody a signal that you are, but you're really not. So that's quality too. Well, let's get started with uh, my five different reasons, but ladies, I'm going to address you for one second. Now, this isn't technically a first date killer, but it is pretty dumb when you do this. So when guys ask you where you want to eat, now guys, you're going to appreciate me for this, and you say, whatever, it is annoying to them. These men literally want to make you happy. They have asked, who knows, 20 girls out, and they don't know what each girl wants to do, what restaurant, drinks only. So would you just do me a favor and would you lead the gentleman in this? Would you kindly tell him where where would you like to go? And here's what I always suggest. Give him three suggestions of restaurants that you love or that you want to try, that are close to you, whatever it is that floats your boat, okay? So instead of saying whatever, which just sounds aloof and kind of nondescript, uh, why don't you give him three suggestions, ask him to take the lead on that and make a plan. There we go. It's a win-win for everybody uh, so that you can get to your first date and then it goes well. Well, let's get started with number one. And this is going to be a little bit harder on you guys, but I think both, both teams need to be better at it. It's you do not give a compliment. And here's the rule. Guys, you give a compliment in the first five minutes. Literally in the first five minutes. I hear these women say, wow, he didn't compliment me all night. And I'm thinking, oh, he probably forgot. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the benefit of the doubt, but if you are doing it in the first five minutes, when she walks in and you notice something, keep that in your mind and make sure in the first five minutes you say it because it's going to be a great way to start your date. And not only are you going to say, wow, you look nice, because that is a a boring and basic kind of compliment. We're going to give a reason why she looks nice. I just, I do an ESPN radio show with Drew Diener every Wednesday morning. And I have to say, we do it with Mark as well. Mark's married, but Mark always gets this stuff. And he's like, well, Katie, you you tell her her shoes look nice. You tell her something direct. And Mark is correct. You don't just give a basic compliment. You give a detailed compliment in the first five minutes. All right, guys, are we good with that? Here's the other, here's the other win for you. At the end of the night, give her a compliment about her character. What is something that you notice throughout the night that she speaks of her kids highly, uh, that she has a passion, that she's really empathetic? So speak to her character before the end of the night, and that's going to be another win for you. Now, ladies, please give guys compliments. You think they don't need it, but these men need it just as much. And I'm going to say if they're putting the effort, if they've done a great job planning, if they've showed up looking really savvy and confident in their style, which I have, guys, I have a style course just for you. Style me confident or, you know, it's, it's uh, great. It's cheap. It's an hour long video. You watch me. I tell you everything you should be wearing and everything you should be throwing out of your closet. But will you give these guys like a, a big thumbs up, like a high five, like a heck yeah, you look hot tonight. Like men love this stuff. So don't think that you don't need to give compliments either. All right, let's do number two. You talk too much or not enough. And you would think that's common sense, but if no one's giving you feedback on these dates, you don't really know right? So you think you're being friendly or you think you're being a good listener and actually how the person is perceiving you is not that at all. They think you're throwing up on them, TMIing, or they just think you're disinterested and not really there with them in their conversation. So here's what you need to be noticing. If you are the one who talks too much, um, typically it's women, but not always. You might be interviewing them, too many questions, not really diving deeper, Ask those deeper questions. Oh, really? Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me about that. How did that go? I mean, these are these are just common ways that you can get deep with anybody. Um, ask them, what's your passion? Things, that, leading questions, you know, what is next on your agenda? What do you want to achieve soon? Um, these are going to be the kinds of questions, not like what's in your bank account, where, you know, how did your divorce go? Let's avoid these kinds of things because you end up throwing up on somebody or, or somebody feels like they're being interviewed. And here's the other thing too, ladies, if you tell him 
and you share the story of how your ex-boyfriend treated you terribly and your ex-husband did as well, what he's going to think is that you don't have standards and that you're, you're kind of easy to push around. And he might even think, well, good, then I won't put in that much effort, effort either because she obviously was okay with it because she stuck around with the guy or whatnot. So set the standards, set the bar, and don't share those experiences in the early stages. You can share them later, but you're, you're setting a new bar. If that did happen to you, set the new bar and make sure that he doesn't even need to know about it because girl, you're not even gonna let that happen again, okay? Now guys, here's what happens a lot with you. You're good listeners, which we love, but you're not actively listening. And so for example, and I've had my boys do this because they're a little gentlemen in training, uh, you know, they have to make noises while I talk. So as I'm, you know, discussing something out loud, but I want him to hear me, my boys go, oh yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, tell me more. Like there is, there is an active listening that's happening. And we, this has happened once. I have a very good friend. He's a great listener, but because I told an entire story and he didn't technically butt in and ask me a single question about it, I felt like he wasn't really there with me. And later on, he's like, well, Katie, I was listening. I go, I know, but you didn't even actively, you didn't ask me a question. You didn't interrupt me and you didn't want to hear more about a certain part. But he thought he was doing the right thing, and I felt like he was being a little aloof. So make sure that you are doing, you know, checking. Just check and see, like, oh my gosh, tell me more. Like, how'd that make you feel? Like, you might have to get in touch with your EQ, guys. I have a whole podcast on the EQ. Ladies love it. It's the buzzword. So figure out your EQ and ask those questions. All right, number three. Oh, and let me just add this here. Here is a good test to see if they're a good listener. Ladies, I did this all the time by date number three. You know, I'm a 333 or three dates, three weeks, three months. By date number three, ask him if he knows your kids' names. So if you, if you love your kids, if you have a horse, if you have a nonprofit that you work with and you talk about a lot, test him. And I have a podcast on testing as well because men and women give tests in their dating. Uh, I think that's podcast 28. And so test him and ask, hey, so do you even know the name of my kids? I used to always do that. And I'll tell you what, you knew a good listener when he was like, oh yeah, it's this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, those are some major brownie points. So guys, be good, be good listeners. I'm sorry. I even call it not listening because you can listen all day. Hear her heart, hear her heart. All right. Number three, you mess up the date because you're just awkward at the end. Uh, this goes for men and women, but men, we want you to be the leaders in this part, right? So you kind of set the tone for the closing of the date. Now, obviously, I, I, I can't be there for every closure of a date, so I don't know how it went. Half the time, you guys are clueless if she even wants to see you again because you ladies are, are not being vulnerable and you don't want to tell him or show him or literally you have to go home and call your three girlfriends and discuss the date and figure it out. I get it. Totally fine. But number one, if you like the guy and you want to see him again, tell him that. For the sake of humanity and dating, will you just say something like, hey, I kind of like you. I'd totally see you again. A guy would love that. Hello, door opener. He's ready to walk through now. If you, if you leave the door closed, he's not sure if he should knock, if you should push. So make that clear for him so it's not awkward at the end. Now, guys, I know some of these women make it awkward for you at the end. You're not sure if she wants to see you again. You would like to see her again, so let's do this. Say something to the effect like, hey, I'd really love to see you again, but why don't you go home, sleep on it, and I'll text you in the morning. You know, or text me when you get home, make sure you're safe, and I'll reach out in the morning. Give her some time to decide if she wants to see you again, because if you ask her right then and there, and you're not sure if she does, she's going to say yes, because she doesn't want to be mean, because we women are told to be nice, but she actually doesn't want to see you again. And then she's going to kind of ghost you afterwards, because... She didn't really want to say yes, but she felt stuck in the moment like a deer in headlights. So you've got to give her some space. Don't ask her for a second date exactly on the first date unless you know you knocked it out of the park. Then be like, okay, Saturday, I'm, I'm going to see you Saturday. We're doing the farmer's market. You know, second dates should always be really fun dates. Okay, so don't be awkward. And the kiss and the hug thing, I mean, just walk her to her car, give her a hug. If you don't know what to do, just give her a really great hug. There's, You know I'm a huge proponent of hugs. I've had to teach my husband I need four hugs a day. Like we have to purpose it. <laughs> it's not his natural, but I can tell you what. If you give a woman a great hug without having to kiss on her and hold her hand and get all smoochy-woochy on a first date, that's, that's brownie points. 
That is a win. Every woman is shaking her head right now. Okay, number four, you miss the quality person because you keep looking for chemistry. I hate this word. I hate that people say it to me all the time. Well, Katie, there's no chemistry. I don't care. I mean, we have a matchmaker in our company who is now having more kids with this guy, married to him, and on her first date with him, there wasn't a lot of chemistry, but she knew. She knew he was a good man because of the way he conducted the date up to the date, after the date. So she said to herself, I mean, she had to talk herself into it. Like, Katie, I went on a second date and wow, I, I realized he's a great guy. There wasn't a bunch of chemistry. And ladies, you don't always want the guy with chemistry because he's Mr. Charming. He's having chemistry with everybody. You don't always want to have chemistry with somebody because they're Mr. Charming or Mrs. Charming and they're flirty and charming with everybody. And that's not your keeper. Be, be mindful of that. And here's how I look at, at chemistry. Chemistry is lighter fuel to a fire. Whew. You can squeeze it on and it goes big for a little bit and then it goes away. And you have to keep using it. Keep using it. It's not really what keeps the fire going or what starts the fire. Now, I believe on a first date you should have spark. There has to be spark between the two of you, something interesting, fun, commonalities, communication was great. There's a little bit of a spark, but don't go for chemistry because ultimately I can have chemistry with the 20 year old that I meet in Cabo. And then what? Okay, so all of you are like, Katie, there wasn't any chemistry, get over it. Look for the spark and remember that it's the embers that keep the fire burning. And that's gonna be your ultimate relationship goal. All right, well, number five, let's finish up here. And this is usually on you guys. You don't follow up in a timely manner. If, if the mojo is flowing and dating definitely has a mojo and you do not follow up, check back in, get a second date planned, Mm, guess what? She's either having a second date with another guy or she's already done. Like she feels like your effort was minimal. So if she's mirroring that effort, she's not reaching out and planning a second date because, you know, we want to be pursued. So you've got to move quickly. You've got to create that energy and keep the energy moving. Get that dating mojo moving and be a man of your word. If you say you're going to text her in the morning, text her in the morning. And ladies, respond back in a timely manner. Don't do this whole like, oh, I've got to wait, the three-day rule. That is shenanigans, and that is no part of old school because old school is polite. So remember, old school standards with new school style. Now, guys, I feel like these are some serious rules that are easy to fix, easy to follow. Um, do me a favor and just make sure you send this to someone. Send me some new ideas for podcast, datingwithkatie at gmail.com. And I hope that you check out my courses and work with me soon. All right, you guys, until next time, cheers to great dating.